I took off on my own to the old city of Damascus, where one night I met Amma, who wanted to tell me about his wife, Ragda. She needs advice to be heard. Any people in this world, you know that. But the voice is very small. It's very strong woman. I'm very weak man. Ragnar had been snatched by the secret police for writing a book criticizing the government. Why should he necessarily trust a British guy from the BBC? And and it, and that wasn't working for a long time. He was. He was sort of wanting the publicity about his wife in prison, but when it came to really offering true personal details, the, that wasn't quite there. I remember almost leaving him at one point, and uh, we had a kind of a, a conversation on Skype, and he said, oh, you know, if you come back, I promise you can have, you know, real access. And I came back, and then we sort of really started to build trust. But trust comes through more than just asking for it. Trust comes through really believing someone. We've reported many times on the repression of protest by the Assad regime in Syria. But last week, that repression came rather closer to home. The independent filmmaker Sean McAllister was picked up by Syrian security forces and held for five days. After prison, my prison, we'd all somehow got a shared identity. <laughs> I was, I was like a proper member of the family. <laughs> you know, I'd been in prison as well. And that was when I think they felt, oh my God, you know, instead of blaming me, they kind of felt, gosh, he's even been to prison to make this bloody film. Mama, I guess my heart. I guess my heart. Did you like him before? Yeah. And now? No. Does it make you want to leave? Yeah. And live somewhere else? Or fight. Fight? Fight who? The government. I think everything that we do should change us because we're human beings. And that means that we're evolving, we're intellectualizing wherever we go and whoever we meet and everything that you do should change you. But there's not a, you know, I don't wake up with panic attacks in the middle of the night in a tra traumatic sweat about stuff. I mean, there have been times when you do reflect on things. I mean, I don't, I suppose, watch the news as easily as some people. I'm now very angry about the political situation in Syria, more angry than I usually get because I'm thinking of, of what's really going on. It's uh, horrendous. But yeah, I mean, I make films for the experience of making the films, not just to tell a story. I do it in a very selfish way. So I suppose I'm, I'm wanting to change in making a film. <laughs> Ragnar had hidden Amma's laptop, so he couldn't speak to his girlfriend. I think this process of being filmed is quite an, an interesting process that the participant goes on because I think a lot of self-examination takes place where they question themselves. I think more, more interestingly, they sort of watch the film now and they think more about what, what they did in getting divorced. So I think there's elements of regret there. I mean, I know there is. That's quite hard because I think you watch the film and then you look at yourself in those situations where you were out of control and you think, well, what if? If I'd done this or if I'd done that. If you had the choice, Tomorrow, you would go here yeah. or here? No, yeah. If you ask me, yeah. the family and new staff. It's not future here for our children. 
we can we cannot uh, send them to their school. I think there's a, there's a sentence that Amma says in the film when he says, you know, 300,000 people have been killed and what did the West do? Nothing. Well, wait, because the problem will come to you. And it was a prophecy that he said, because at that point, the problem hadn't come to Europe in terms of tens of thousands and millions of refugees displaced because of this problem. But now they have. And the other problem that's come is in terrorism. Charlie Hebdo in Paris and other attacks across European cities will increase and continue. And a bigger development, in a way, because of the boldness, ball, because of the weakness of Obama in his foreign policy, allowing Assad, setting a red line, allowing Assad to step over it when he chemi drops chemical weapons on kids. Now, yes, Whenever you talk about immigration or refugees, you only ever see in the media the reaction of the right. Kick them out, close the doors, close the borders. When that little boy's body was washed up onto the seashore, what you actually saw was, a, was, was, was the honest reaction of, from the people in a very humane, humane way that said, actually, this is, this, is, this is how much of a crisis this is. A family and a children have just been washed up on the sea, on the beach. And there was an outpouring then, initially, I think, of, uh, of humanity and wanting to help. I don't think the film got offers political solutions or can change the world. But in the backdrop of this refugee crisis, which we only see in short three-minute sound bites or bursts of news, we never really get to know any of these dark and doubt figures called refugees. This film allows the audience to have 75 minutes in the living room of those people's lives, which is so rare. And, and Ragda's mental crisis at the end of the film isn't dissimilar from a lot of what refugees will be carrying. So I think if people have anything that they take away from the film, it's that whenever, you, whenever we think about refugees coming, we have to realize that they're coming with lots of things and lots of traumas and they're not gonna settle easily. And if they don't settle easily, it's not, the, it's not their problem. It's going to be our problem. It's going to be the society they're in will have problems because you have lots of people sort of settling that are not really settling. And if they don't settle, it becomes a, a problem of the society. We, we, have to, uh, we have to take that on board. <laughs> There was more and more news of Syria in the news that there was an overkill with the story. So we started to reduce the context of what's happening in the country and push the character, the kids, the family, the love story. And that, that, that went normally in a documentary, you'd have 70% context. What's happening politically, what's going on and people talking about the political context and 20 or 30% character. This film turns it on its head, has 70% character human drama and just vignettes, uh, reminders of what's going on with the bigger picture.